Bookshop.com. I'm with the Hungarian delegation and the head of delegation, Lawrence Bubno. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah absolutely perfect. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome to Lisbon. How's it been going so far? Well, so far, so good. We really had a good time and <laughs> we had good rehearsals, so we're looking forward to this show next week. Cool. ADAL is a huge national final selection. You have a lot of semi finals and then you come to your final. Talk me through the process of how that's put together, where you find your artists from, yeah, and some production values for that. Yeah, so it's as the, the program's been around for years now, now everybody knows actually in Hungary, I mean all the bands, all the composers, all the lyricists are aware of, of this program that we have, Odal, and uh, so we always put out a uh, call for entries towards the end of September uh, each year, and then we just, uh, so the rules are pretty much the, the same as in Eurovision, so of okay. course that the, uh, because we know that it's going to be, so the veneer of the doll is going to come to Eurovision, so it can't be released before the 1st of September, yeah. and things like that, and everything else mm -hmm. that applies to Eurovision, mm -hmm. and then the entries come in, well, it's a uh, it's varying number, so it's some somewhere around 300 and 500 every year that uh -huh. we receive, Wow, that's quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Uh, and you know, also the so there are some very, very good ones. Some quite famous artists write songs for this. Some up and coming and some absolutely new um, okay. songs are also presented. And then there's a pre-jury part where we narrow down the the initial few hundred to only 30, and those are the ones who get to the live shows. Okay. So is it more important for you as a TV company to present a good national final TV show or for your Hungarian audience or to pick the right song? I would say the first. So, so it's really about having, having a good show, sh showing the new talents, showing the new songs that mm -hmm. are getting produced every year. As a public service media, I think that's, that's, that's something that, yeah. that we really have to strive for to, to give uh, you know, ground to new artists as well and new songs. So I think that's, that's a mission, part of it. Of course, uh, I think the jury uh, always tries to you know, sort out and try, tries to think with this thing in mind in that, head, yeah. that that the song is going to go to Eurovision but on the other hand for example this year I think it was quite so it was rather for the for the audience because yeah. those are the ones who got AWS to Eurovision because the jury yeah they gave them points but not as many not as, as the many. audience yeah, yeah. Okay. and so coming touching on the promotional parties uh, that's exploded the last few years I think we have five major stops on the promo tour now do you think that's useful for uh, as a TV company or do you think they influence the result in any way? I don't think they would influence the result too much because you know uh, the audience at the promotional parties are the ones who are watching Eurovision uh, already so they don't need to get to know the new artists. Yeah. On the other hand um, I think it's a good thing uh, for the band or for the artists themselves because they uh, I know that each artist that we send to any of the promotional parties they are taken aback by the by the immense love and and attention that they yeah. get from the Eurovision fans who are crazy as we know yeah. Yeah, so yeah. so it's it's a very very good thing for them to you know to get to know this before yeah. they get to the actual contest because then they can prepare you yeah. can't you can't really prepare yeah. but then you can but it gets them used yeah. to the media and it gets them used to people they yeah, did the same absolutely. faces they're gonna see on the promo stops they're gonna see here yeah it's yeah absolutely so I I think that it's it's not about the results I don't really think that we should deal with the results at all, so it's you know, too many things that you can't influence, I think. Exactly. Uh, so it's a, good thing. It's, it's a good thing in terms of meeting the audience and having a good time and getting prepared for performing in this Eurovision type of setting. Okay, cool. Thanks for that answer. That's a really, really thorough answer there. Uh, touching on the fan media, obviously, again, that's another thing that's really exploded over the last few years. Do you find that useful as a TV company? Do you take on board anything that's, that's said pre-coming to here? Well, I don't... I wouldn't really say that uh, we... Uh, we try not to let ourselves be influenced by, by fan media and fan types of criticisms because yeah. we get a lot mm -hmm. and if we would take every single type of uh, every single criticism into or, or just remarks into account mm -hmm. then we would end up having something which is not very you know uh, comprehensive and which is not good enough but on the other hand it's good uh, to so it's good to get uh, feedback sometimes mm -hmm. for example after the rehearsals I think many of the fan media sites 
they write about the rehearsals, they they give out some opinions, which is a good thing and I think it's worth reading. I wouldn't let the artist read them, of course no. they can, yeah. but so... This is about what the production side, the yeah, production but, side of things. But, I can, but then it's good to think about, because every single remark is worth considering, I think. Yeah. Okay, cool. And fan media, so the uh, everybody, the journalists of fan media, they've watched uh, hundreds of Eurovision acts perform. So I think they know something, so they do have an experience of what might work. I kind of agree, we do have an experience, but we're not always right. Yeah, <laughs> of course, of course, but th th that's, that's, that's not a bad thing. And, and Eurovision always throws up surprises. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, uh, your stage presentation, it's uh, obviously quite, the band had probably had quite a lot of input in on that. Uh, how did you feel about that as a, from the delegation point of view? Well, I think we really, really like what we've seen. Also, during the first rehearsal, it was all already very, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was very happy when, uh, for the first time after the Heads of Delegation meeting, I managed to talk to Matthias Carson, the viewing room yeah. producer, and he... Um, he listened to our ideas and of course he read all the things that we sent him and then he, he told us that he likes the idea and, and the production team likes it so they try to do their best to come as close to it as they can and I think they managed so um, it, I really think that so, so I was quite happy to be honest to to learn that this year we won't be having the LED uh, walls yeah. because, for example, in our case, for in case of AWS, it's a good thing. They are they are concerts, so a gig-based uh, band, and yeah. they are very good on stage with st stage presence. They do I don't know how, how many concerts a year, so they are really really used to this type of thing. Not this huge arena, of course. Yeah. So this is a new thing for no, them. No, they did play. Tel uh, they went to Tel Aviv though, so they played in. Did Not they play Tel Aviv. They they they, 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 they Amsterdam. yeah Amsterdam, which is also quite big. So yes. so I think that was like. 4,000 people yeah, in yeah. the venue, so it's big. Um, and they, for example, also in Hungary, sometimes they play on very big stages. Okay. Still, um, you know, this arena setting is something new, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I think they, they manage. So now that I'm watching the rehearsals and when I'm there in the viewing room, I can see that they are really really start to enjoy it okay. and that's the that's the more, most important thing cool. i think they will come to life when there's an audience with them as well. very much so they they always say say so that uh, yeah. they really want to be there and to get back the energy that they are putting out there and yeah. now there's not too much response but when that's going to be like 12,000 people yeah they're going to get some response yeah. then okay Lawrence absolutely lovely to speak to you just one final question and this one always uh, makes people go oh let's stop and think uh, if there was one rule at eurovision what what one rule at Eurovision that you could change? What would it be and why? Okay, I will say two things. Uh, okay, I'll let you have two. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, just one thing is just an experience of today. I would change uh, that uh, the delegation members can't come in without their badges because actually one of us left it at home oh, from okay. the band. I won't tell you who who that was, and okay. we were pretty much close to being being late for our rehearsal. Okay. So that would be bomb, but that's just the <laughs> just to reflect on the story yeah. what happened today. Uh, I would really like to. I know that it's impossible to be honest, but I like to bring back live music. You are not the first head of delegation of to say that, I and know. I don't think you will be the last. No, 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 I know, but uh, it's it's such a great thing, and for example, when we're having artists like AWS, who are so good performing live, if they if you go to one of their concerts, uh, sometimes you feel it's a pity that you can't listen to a the actual instruments. So I think that would be the first thing that I would change. Okay. Lawrence, amazing. Thank you so much. Enjoy the Lisbon sunshine. It's finally sunny now. Yeah. So have a good time and good best of luck. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for the interview.